In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a black and white adjustment layer to this image and then use the layer mask to do this. You can find this image in the link in the description or download it in the actual course. So once you have your image open, this is really straightforward. Just come over to the adjustment area. Because remember, these are non-destructive adjustments. They allow future editing should you change your mind about something. So I'm going to add the black and white adjustment layer, which is this icon here. And remember, I can toggle my eyeballs on and off to see the effect of an adjustment, right? Or any layer. Now, essentially, I want the color from beneath to come through the eyes in this black and white conversion. This right here is a mask. It's a layer mask. And if it's a white mask, that means it's revealing everything on this layer. So this whole layer is about converting whatever's underneath to black and white. What's revealing all of that black and white stuff. If I choose the brush tool right here, come over, I need to make this brush a lot smaller. And remember that left bracket key will make it a lot smaller visually. Now, what if I also want to zoom in a bit? Cause I'm only at 31% if I look down at the bottom left corner. So I'll grab that zoom tool. And actually let's try a keyboard shortcut. If you hold the command and space bar for a Mac or control and space bar for a Windows user, it temporarily changes to a zoom tool, allowing me to zoom in. I can let go of just the command or the control key holding down the space bar still, my cursor quickly goes to the hand tool. Then I let go and it goes right back to the brush tool. Essentially, I need to cut a hole in this layer to see the layer beneath. So black is in my foreground. If it's not, you can just click this foreground background reset swatch and then you can change your color of what's in the foreground by clicking these double arrows. I need black in the foreground. I need black to paint on a white mask. I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller by using the left bracket key, and then I'm gonna click and paint. Now I wanna double check, because watch what happens if my hardness is at 100%. Yours may be at any variable here, and I'll do this side. Now I'm lucky that I have a like a hard edge uh, of this dark circle around the eye, but if I didn't, this, this edge here would be pretty distracting. Typically, I like to paint most of the times with a hardness of zero. It really fades it out, so in case there's a problem, it makes it more subtle. Now, if I overpaint, like right here, all I have to do is come over to this left and right angle, click it, and it will swap the foreground and background colors. I have trouble coming all the way over here and all the way back, so I just keep my fingers over the keyboard because I know if I type the letter X, look at my foreground and background swatches, they change. They just switch back and forth constantly. So whenever I'm editing a mask, I'll quickly like type my X to you know fix that. And then if I came out to here, I'll type X to get the white back and I'll just quickly paint it out. It allows for very quick editing. And then if I take off too much, I'll type the X again and just put back what I messed up. Using that X key while you're painting on a layer mask is really quick. I'm gonna type command or control zero to fit in the screen. Now I have this image with some spot color. What I always have the freedom to do if I want to change the color of these eyes is I can add a hue and saturation layer above and just drag the hue and I can change the actual color of the eyes to whatever I want. Feel free to choose whatever crazy eye color you would like for this particular image. I need to save it so I can save my working file. Go to save, save as. So you already know this part. You want to save it as a Photoshop file, which is .psd. This will be your working file. It will preserve all of your layers so you can come back and change or fix mistakes or make corrections or additions or alterations whenever you want. After you've saved it as a .psd, come back and also save it as a JPEG with that embedded color profile of sRGB because that's perfect for the web. That's perfect for these project templates that you'll be submitting. And you know how to do all that by now based on the other videos you've watched up to this point. Now, here's another thing to think about. This is a really large file, right? 68 megs. That's pretty large. So remember your image size. You can always go up to image image size and say, yeah, there's nothing I'm working on that needs to be bigger than 1920 in the width, which is full HD resolution. So now I need to save as. I could hit Command Shift or Control Shift S or just save as. Choose JPEG and I would name this one underscore small or underscore 1920. Again, you choose your favorite way, your favorite workflow that works for you and use it consistently. Hope that helps. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Yes. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome.
What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I did. This is hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.